Welcome to this short video demo of the latest development in the SNE network emulator portfolio. SNE with 100 gigabit interfaces. We'll conclude this session with a short video demonstration where I'll hand over to my colleague Giles. But first I wanted to provide some context on where SNE 100 gig will fit. SNE is the first multi-port 100 gigabit network emulator to hit the market. Until now, 100 gig network emulators have been limited to only two 100 gig ports. SNE 100 gig will offer up to eight 100 gig interfaces in a single chassis, along with the great UI and toolkit SNE has always offered. The rise of 100 gigabit data center and cloud applications creates a need for higher port density. Only SNE can answer the multiple 100 gigabit port conundrum. A recent test case shows how SNE with 100 gig can do this. In this example, a VNF vendor was working in partnership with a large telecoms operator who was moving 5G core network functions to a public data center. With the connections being 100 gigabit, 100 gig interfaces were needed. However, the requirement was to send multiple flows, typically 10 gig or less, at the same time, so, so two ports was insufficient. The vendor was able to test a variety of software applications using typical network impairments, such as delay and drop packets. In this way, they could verify the application behavior prior to going into a live network. The result, faster time to market, and lower risk of adverse application performance. I'll now hand over to my colleague Giles, who will take you through a short demo of how this might look. This is the dashboard screen of the SNE, showing a graphical representation of the chassis. In this case, it contains four dual port 100 gigabit cards, one, two, three, four, each of the eight ports has a link established at 100 gigabits per second, as indicated by the link LED. And on ports 1 and 2, we can see packets being transmitted and received. So I'm now going to reserve ports 1 and 2 for my exclusive use. And now we're ready to take a look at the map screen. This is my network emulation map, which is designed to illustrate the concept of what the VNF vendor was trying to achieve in the use case just described. They wanted to be able to filter traffic into different flows and impair each flow differently in terms of delay and packet drop. So on this map we have traffic coming in on port 1 and being subjected to an IP address filter. If we take a look at the settings of that filter you can see that we're filtering on a specific source IP address of 192.168.200.10. Traffic which matches that IP address will go down the pass path, where we will apply 40 milliseconds of constant latency, and then we will drop 1% of packets passing along that path. Packets which don't match the source IP address of 192.168.200.10 We'll go down the fail path and it's then compared against a different IP address .201.10 and if it matches that we'll apply a different delay and drop packet percentage otherwise it will be compared against a third IP address .202.10 and again we'll apply a different delay and packet drop percentage. After the traffic has been impaired we will pass it to the output port 2 Traffic then comes back in on port 2, through the SNE, and out on port 1, passing in a reverse direction. So I'll start my map running in a moment, but before I do, I'm going to disable all of my impairments, just so we can see the effect more clearly in Spirant Test Center when I enable the delay and the packet drop. So I'm just going to highlight these impairments and disable them. And now I'm ready to click the play button to start my map running. So we can see the traffic flowing along all three paths here, as expected. 
So let's take a look at Spirant Test Center to see how that's configured. So this is Spirant Test Center or STC. Um, you can see my port speed is set to 100 gig interface. I'm generating just 10% load in each direction. So that's 10% of 100 gigabits per second, which gives an aggregate port rate of 20 gigabits per second. And the traffic I'm generating is an iMix of different packet sizes to simulate real world traffic. Now, if we look at the table below, you can see the dropped frame percentage is currently zero, which I would expect because we haven't enabled our drop packet uh, impairments yet. And if we look at the basic counters tab, you can see the short term average latency is seven or eight microseconds. So that's the intrinsic latency with no impairment supplied. Now if we go back to the SNE and I will enable the delay impairments. So that's all three of them now enabled. We'll go back to STC and have a look at the effects on the basic counters page. You can see the short term average latency is 40,000, 50,000 and 60,000 microseconds. Let's just show that in milliseconds to make it a little clearer. So I had 40, 50, and 60 milliseconds, which matches what I have set on my map. So I had 40, 50, and 60. So I'll now enable the packet drop impairments as well. That's all three of those uh, enabled. So what we should expect to see is 1%, 2%, and 3% dropped packets on the different streams. We'll go back to STC switch to the advanced sequencing tab. And here you can see the dropped frame percent rate of 1%, 2%, 3%.